Situation. Entity A has a public and private key pair. Entity B can see Entity A's public key, but wants to verify that Entity A actually holds the private key that corresponds to it without ever needing to see it. And in this situation, Entities A and B can be any two entities that you want. One common example of this for the purposes of application development could be a browser and a server. If you're watching this video, it means that you're logged into Decipher, so your public key is sitting in your browser. But in order to show you the video, I need to verify that you're in fact the account holder associated with the public key in your browser, because the public keys are by definition public. Anyone could go look on the main chain, and if they really wanted to, go get a list of every public key that has purchased this series. So I need to verify that you actually have the private key before rendering the video. So here is one way we could solve this. We can create a message that both the client and the server share, and then run a function called an elliptic curve sign, or EC sign for short. This function is going to take two arguments, the private key and the shared message, and it is going to output an encoded hash that looks like just a bunch of meaningless letters and numbers. Then we can send that encoded hash to the server. And the server can run what's called an elliptic curve recovery, or EC recover for short. The EC recover function will take two arguments, the encoded hash and the shared message, and it will then output a public key. And then all that we would need to do is verify that the public key recovered from the hash actually matches the public key from the browser. And if it does, then the browser must actually be holding the private key as well and we never actually needed to see what that private key was. And all of this works using a piece of mathematics called elliptic curve cryptography. The elliptic curve is the graph that you see on my left with that red squiggly line. Now, the red squiggly line has a couple of interesting properties. First and foremost, if you just take one hemisphere of the graph, let's just take the top half, and you draw two points on the red line and connect them with a line, if you extended that line out, you could always find a third point in the same hemisphere that the line intersects. Another interesting property of this graph is that if you reflect any point over the x-axis, you will arrive at another point that is on the graph as well. So the way that this kind of cryptography works is that you'll start with two points, let's call them A and B here, and you extend the line outward until you find the third point that it intersects with on the graph, and then you will connect that and then invert it over the x-axis and then do it again. And then you'll do it again until you arrive at some ending point, in this case, point E. Now, if you did not know about points A and B or you only had one of those points, it would be very, very hard to figure out where the other point on that graph was that led you to point E, because it seems like it's just random. But if you did know about points A and B, it would be very easy to just run the simulation back and verify that point E is where you actually end. Now, I can't really pretend to understand how this stuff works, um, but I guess that's just kind of the basics of it. Okay, so in order to see what this would look like in an application, we're going to need to use that Ethereum JS util library, which is loaded into the global namespace as futil. Now first, I'm going to set a variable p key, and I'm going to set that equal to the first private key in my test RPC over here. And we're going to need that private key as a buffer also. So I'll do p key x equals new buffer p key comma hex. And then I'm going to set a variable equal to message. In this case, I'm just going to use the message decipher tv. And because decipher tv is not a hexadecimal string, we're going to need to hash it. So I will do var message hash equals web3.sha3, and then pass in the message. And if we look at message hash right here, you'll notice that this is actually the exact same hexadecimal string that you need to sign with your private key in order to access these videos and verify your wallet. So we're going to need a buffer of the message hash also because the EC sign function requires buffers. So we don't need that OX part here. So I'm just gonna copy this and do var message hash x equals new buffer and then pass this in and then hex and then in order to generate a signed message we can do var signed message equal to f util dot ec sign and it's going to take two arguments the message hash buffer and then the private key buffer and if we look at the signed 
message, it's going to be this really weird, complicated data structure that has an R, S, and a V value. Now that R, S, and V values represent those three points on the elliptic curve somehow. I'm not exactly sure how all that relates to each other. I just know that it kind of does, but you don't need to really understand the underlying cryptography to understand how to work with it. So we have this signed message here, and we need to get some sort of string that we can then send from the browser to the client to the server. So we're going to say var signed hash equals futil dot two rpc sig. So the hex string that we're going to use as our shared message is going to be called an rpc signature. So we'll do rpc sig. And then this will take the signed message dot v, the signed message dot r, and the signed message dot s value. And we will make this a hex string. And if we look at the signed hash, we'll see that this is just utter nonsense. This does not mean anything to anyone. If anybody intercepted this message, they would not know what you could possibly do with it. But if you did know the shared message that we established in the beginning, which was decipher TV, you can recover a public key out of this. So we could send this from the browser to the server. And then on the server, we're going to need to recover from it. So we will set a variable var sig decoded is going to equal futil dot from rpc sig as opposed to to rpc sig and we will pass in that signed hash and if we look at sig decoded that will look very similar to the message that we had before and now here we can say var recovered pub equals futil dot ec recover cover and then pass in the message hash buffer and then sig decoded dot v sig decoded dot r and sig decoded dot s oh sorry and i missed a comma right here so it should actually be like this okay and if we look at the recovered pub it looks something like this so it's some weird buffer but it's not a private it's not our public key yet so we can get to the public key by doing var recovered address equals futil dot pub to address and then passing in the recovered pub dot to string hex and if we look at what we get here voila fe4900 and if we look at the actual public key of the the account it is 0x fe4900 i feel like i just did a magic trick there but that is that is pretty cool. That is the entire workflow that you would need. And in the next video, I'm going to show how you can implement an authentication scheme on a website by using that exact same kind of workflow.